So I recently stumbled upon MIT's career advising and professional development webpage, where they basically tell you how to use the STAR method to answer behavioral questions. But more interestingly here, uh, towards the end of the page, they uh, advise you that you may be able to find uh, someone from your target company who are willing to provide insight and conduct behavioral mock interviews. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting to share a couple of pros and cons of using someone, of hiring someone from that target company to help you, to coach you for your upcoming job interview. Uh, and I'll focus on three pros and then uh, talk about three cons around this approach. So the first pro you should uh, take advantage of someone's knowledge of, of, of your target company is because they know very well the culture there, right? They know what it's like to work there. And these can be a significant uh, motivational boost for many candidates, right? Uh, also, they can give you uh, career advice on how to do well in your job there and in your trajectory uh, with that company, right? So they know the culture and that's a, that's a, that's a plus, right? The second plus um, that someone from your target company um, might uh, be valuable to your interviewing journey is that uh, they have insight on the hiring process, right? So uh, if you, you, you can trust those people more than you would the, your points of contact with, uh, with your target company for the hiring process, uh, because you actually pay them, you know, a fee for this usually. Uh, so um, what type of insight you might expect from, from these people? Well, yeah, they do have some question, idea of the types of questions you might receive in advance, right? So um, they might even know who you will be interviewing with. They might know people on the hiring panel. It, it happened to me in, in certain cases to have these, uh, for someone, for the candidate to tell me, hey, yes, I know a friend who helped me co uh, prepare my interview, who knows pretty much everyone on the hiring panel, right? So um, it's not uncommon um, also to for, for them to tell you who will be the most important stakeholders in the hiring process. And this could be also, of course, beneficial because you'll be using the your primary stories with them and therefore, you know, increase your chance of success in the job interview, right? So insider info is the second pro of, uh, of uh, taking advantage of someone who works there. And um, the third pro um, would be referrals, right? So uh, many of these well-known companies have referral, employee referral programs, and uh, these referrals can be useful in some cases, not for everyone, in some cases to pass the screening rounds more easily and up to a certain point, uh, you know, to have a little bit of extra brand bo branding boost if you want for your on-site interview, especially if they know the, the people on the hiring panel, right? So these would be the three uh, pros of, um, of using someone from your target company to help you prep your upcoming job interview, uh, mock interviews included, by the way. Uh, now, um, what are some cons around this approach? I wouldn't call them necessarily cons, but rather things you should be aware of. And things that I know most uh, candidates uh, have no idea about. So the first one is that behavioral interviews are not easy to prepare. Because uh, to put it the other way around, if they would be easy, then no company would be using them. <laughs> there would be no interest in, in having uh, people to prepare these behavioral interviews. And to give an idea here, um, I bet that you don't have a story bank the moment that you watch this video. And... Um, um, Ninety-five percent of candidates will never end up with a proper story bank going into an intense behavioral interview, and many people just prepare these interviews just as you know. Yes, I have to do it because they ask it. Whereas you know the the, the context of a behavioral interview, you must actually, if you're good with this, you can actually bias the interviewer towards you uh, and get the job because you are primarily good with behavioral interviewing skills. It's possible. It's perfectly possible, but again, it's it's not a straightforward, right? So if you hire someone for the purpose of behavioral interview, you should know that behavioral interviews are not straightforward. And this is regardless if uh, the person you're hiring is a recruiter, hiring manager, director, developer, analyst, or you name it, you name the, the, the job title. If that person isn't spending full time on coaching for behavioral interviews, uh, Mm. then I, I, you know, they might be a perfectly qualified person to tell you what they think about your answers, but as far as to perfection your behavioral interviewing skills, no, I, I'm skeptical about this because I do this for, for a long time and I know how hard it is for me 
how hard it was for me to develop these skills, uh, right? But still, if they are great listeners, that can be significantly beneficial to you, right? Um, the second con around uh, using someone from a target company um, would be uh, those three elements, those three pros that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you know, the culture, the insight on the process and the referrals, uh, are, they, uh, are they the main thing to make a difference? for your upcoming job interview, because the culture is usually on the company's webpage, or if not on their YouTube channel, uh, the insight on the hiring process, uh, just ask ChatGPT or just watch YouTube videos or just look on the websites, because there are many people doing uh, marketing themselves as, uh, as insiders with this company, exactly by sharing that insight, you know, as a means for Google to index. Um, this content so they are closer to you when you when you make uh, this uh, this decision of helping of hiring someone to help you with your upcoming job interview so are these the main thing for your interview they could be so for instance if you prepared if you have a great story bank and uh, you you want a, a morale boost for your for your job interview i believe someone who knows the culture there could could easily motivate you to perform during their job interview. So definitely there are cases, but is that your scenario? That's that's uh, my point here. It's something you should be really uh, considering in your decision. And um, the third reason why uh, uh, you, should be, you should take this more seriously is because there's no such thing as the same hiring process for two separate individuals, unless they're applying for the same role at the same time, right? So. Um, the context of someone getting hired varies greatly from someone else. So, for example, um, your uh, your friend might have been hired during the pandemic when you know the requirements for someone to get hired in that company were very low. The the quality bar was very low. Whereas right now things have significantly changed. You know there are not as many openings and the requirements, the standards have become suddenly super high, right or if someone got hired during the pandemic, they will tell you, hey, but you don't have to know much about these things because they don't care about, uh, I don't know, about Amazon's leadership principles or, uh, you know, various details that they might play a decisive role for your upcoming job interview. Also, the seniority of the role, uh, unless you're applying for, a, for the same type, for a role with the same seniority, again, the intensity of the interview will very much differ right and uh, last but not least hiring teams in high performing companies have a, a great degree of autonomy right so they can pick the questions that they like they can uh, reward their questions they can uh, change their questions however they like so it's going to be different from hiring uh, from one team to another right so this advice you know even if well intentioned you know i i have no doubt that these people are well intentioned to help you to pass your interviews uh, it's you must understand their context, where they're coming from, and the probability that their interviewing advice is the best, right? So um, all in all, I found that um, it is hugely beneficial for, I would say, the majority of candidates to have mock interviews with people preparing for, for, their, uh, for the interviews, because, you know, uh, there are cases where when people write stories for one week and they go into the interview and they realize, oops, they don't sound the same as when I wrote them. Um, I also have a free role play service on my website if you want to use it to, to find other people interested to, to prepare these interviews. Uh, so I have no doubt that these uh, exchanges are useful. It's just that you must understand the goal that you have <clears throat> from them. So if your goal is to become more knowledgeable about the process of how what it's like to get hired there, or what is to work there, yes, I believe that's great. If your purpose is to become good with behavioral interviews, oh, I would <clears throat> I wouldn't be sold on, on this approach uh, just because it's someone who works there that they are good with behavioral interviews, if you'll notice the bias uh, from the initial statement on MIT's website. So uh, I hope uh, I provide you with some useful insight into making your own decisions about uh, where to get help from preparing for your upcoming job interview. And uh, thank you for watching.